Sean O'Donoghue from the uh, Kelly Beggs Fishermen's Organization Commissioner. I think we know each other pretty well. Yes. Uh, also a chairman of the Federation of Irish Fishermen. Uh, I think you, you, uh, you may be surprised to hear, but the number one priority for us in the fishing industry is sustainability. Yes. So uh, we, we, fully, we fully agree with you in relation to that, and we can't have business as usual. However, we, do, uh, we would say to you that, unfortunately, the, the proposals to back up your sustainability don't match that. We don't see that you can deliver the sustainability with the proposals you have at the moment, particularly when you, when you look at the way you have... T t the devil is in the detail here in relation to this, and the proposals don't actually match the principles. That's, that's really what we're saying. Uh, so I, I would ask you in relation to that, uh, how do you see the, that we can apply maximum sustainable yield to all stocks at the same time, knowing, as you do, Commissioner, and you're very passionate about this, that we do have mixed fisheries? So there's going to have to be choices made here. There is no fisherman I know in, the, in Europe or indeed in the world that doesn't want to fish at a maximum yield. But there's going to have to be choices made here. Is it going to be cod or is it going to be herring? But your proposals at the moment saying we must do them all at maximum sustainable, sustainable yield. So uh, your, your principle of sustainability, 100%. I, I think we, we shouldn't forget as well, this is the fourth generation CFP. So uh, we, we've, had, uh, we've had problems in the past and we need to learn from those mistakes. The, the other thing that I'm d disappointed with, and I would ask you about... If you could just ask Commissioner Cresson, please. Central, the the yeah. decentralisation issue. Yes. Uh, I think, the, uh, again, uh, this has uh, been a number one priority for us, but unfortunately the text doesn't match the principle. And uh, similarly, and we have to mention this, your, your uh, 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 individual uh, transferable concessions, we have a major problem with that in Ireland. And I understand what you have said about the safeguards, but unfortunately, we do have uh, uh, treaties in, in the European Union, and we have gone through uh, European court cases on this, and we, have, uh, we, have, we need to learn from our lessons here that if you go down this road, it is inevitable there will, be, there will be a major conglomerates come in here and take over the Irish industry, and you can't protect them. Yeah. So I would ask you how, how you hope to reconcile that. Thank you very much. Uh, do you want to answer that directly, or will we take some other questions at the same time? Or? Uh, what do you think? It's up to you. Okay, well, maybe if you could just go through those points, because I think it gets to the heart of the matter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then um, those, those two gentlemen over there. Yeah. Okay, let me try to f uh, give some short answers, because uh, you have raised uh, everything. I mean, in a very short time, I have to admit. So, uh, maximum sustainable yield uh, until 2015. Uh, well, I would like to say that the European Union uh, has committed itself to this. This is not uh, my choice. We have signed in Johannesburg that uh, we have to reach maximum sustainable yield until 2015. And of course, we have to discuss how, how we are going to this target. And here, what I can say is that I'm very, very willing to discuss with you if you uh, need uh, a gradual approach, what do you think has to be done first here, I'm very willing to discuss. But we have to have this target. We can discuss about how to go there, but we have to have this target. And also, I think that uh, we have to here to to stick on some positive stories we have already. This year, we, uh, we are going to decide about our uh, next year's fishing opportunities and we'll have some progress. So it can be done. In some stocks, we are going with bigger quotas. So this means that if we try, we can deliver. This is what I can say. I don't want to say more. Decentralization. I would like uh, to here to be absolutely sincere with you. I have to respect the treaties. The treaties give us a legal framework in which we have to commit ourselves. So, to make a long story short, if we have any, any proposal for decentralization that is compatible with the treaties and goes further with my proposal, I will accept it. Tomorrow, everything you bring to me 
for further decentralization, but with a legal advice saying that this is compatible with the treaty, I'll accept immediately. Because I have tried a lot and I have exhausted the margins. So I think so. But perhaps we are not called, so we, you have some ideas. So please come with ideas. I'm going to accept them. This is, uh, I would like to say it clearly, period. Everything I'm going to accept, but under one condition, to be legally compatible with the treaties. About the concessions, well, this is a very difficult point. Uh, I know I, we, can, we need to discuss further and further about it. But I would like to say to you that uh, there are a lot of uh, countries that have already implemented the system, and it, it uh, doesn't uh, go to concentration anywhere, as you have said. We have positive examples. Denmark, United States, Australia, New Zealand. Well, we can have safeguards. Mm -hmm. And if you present me legal advice proving that we cannot have safeguards, then I'll accept it. But I think that there are safeguards, our legal service, the le and you, you always say that the legal service of the commission is the most forcing and the best. I'm a little a bit afraid of these lawyers, I have to say. So they have done our best and they have given me clear advice. We can have safeguards. So let's go and don't think that the worst will happen. Of course, I cannot persuade you. I, I can understand. But we have to work together. Thank you. Uh, Donald Denham, Department of Foreign Affairs. Um, oh. Dear Gert, August Tafalcha Road, Balya Clear. Welcome to Dublin. I have a very simple question. It's about uh, the discards. Yes. Uh, a few months ago, I, I watched a, a British television documentary uh, a high-profile personality went out on a fishing trawler from Lowestoft. They had to throw away, it was almost 50% of their catch back into the sea. Uh, they estimated that would have fed 2,000 people. That was in one trawl. I was glad to hear you say that, that this card is morally and environmentally unacceptable. I would say it's a criminal act, and I'd say it's something that gives the European Union a very bad name. Uh, why, my question is a simple one, why, what, why in addressing that, as you've said, must it be done gradually rather than at once? Shall I answer? Yes, please. I don't have a lot to say to this. Just to say that we cannot do it immediately. We need a gradual approach because we have to solve technical problems in cooperation with the governments and our industry. Let me give you an example. Mixed fisheries. Mixed fisheries is a special problem. We have mixed fisheries, so we have to uh, go to our fishermen and say to him, look, you have to land everything you catch. Okay. He will say, okay, so what will happen with the fish I land? Some of these fish can be sold easily. What about the undersized fish? What about the fish they cannot sell? We have to find <coughs> solutions for all this. That's why we need a gradual approach. So our idea is the following. We'll give money to the producers' organizations, a lot of money. We have money for that. We have earmarked the money to build storage mechanisms, to find ways to get advantage of all the fish they land, to solve the practical problems. And then they can stop, they can stop discarding. So we are going to start, to start from clean fisheries, as we call them, because it's easier and it, it can be uh, adopted immediately. So for some stocks, for some fish stocks, we'll have it adopted after one year. For some others, which is more complicated, after two years, and so on and so on. The timeline has to be negotiated and uh, discussed and agreed uh, by ourselves, the parliament, the council, the industry, everybody. But we need the end of the line. So we'll say that until 2015, for example, we'll stop discarding anything uh, that has to do with cod in cod fisheries. After five years, we will stop discard everything in general. So this is the way we are going to do. We need to solve the technical problems. And also, we need to persuade the fisheries industry to cooperate with us. We cannot have uh, control everywhere. We, cannot, we need their cooperation. If they are not persuaded that this is a good idea, they are not going for it. Also, we have to organize this uh, Fish um, for Poor program 
That means that if the fishermen cannot sell the, if, if, for example, you have a producer organization, they gather the fish they catch, and some of this fish cannot be sold. We have to persuade, of course, the consumers to eat all kinds of fish. And this is something that's going very well to the United Kingdom, where the consumption of megrims raised up 30% in one year. But if something is left, then what we are going to do with this? So we organize a program to give this fish to the poor people, because they also need to eat this good food. So we have technical problems to solve. Thank you. Uh, we're beginning to run short. Can I, so I'm going to get, take two questions at a time. So if I could ask you, and then, then there, and then there, and then there. Okay, but I'll take these two questions together first, if that's okay. Okay, I'm Peter Whelan, Sea Fishes Protection Authority. You're very welcome, Commissioner. Um, just two short questions. I'm just wondering, um, I'm aware of the Court of Auditors report where they did inspections in six countries and found um, with very bleak findings, very poor findings of the uh, controls. I'm just wondering what features do you feel in the revised common fisheries policy will lead to a better, a more level playing field? Um, and secondly, with regard to regionalization or decentralization, um, you talk about a, a boat leaving Holt that might have a particular mesh size. Within Ireland, we're in a unique position where we have French, Spanish, UK vessels. We have a lot of um, non-Irish vessels that the Sea Fisheries Protection Authority have to control. And in regards to a level playing field, they can't all be using different mesh sizes out there. So we would have to sit with our UK, our Spanish, and our French counterparts and agree the mesh size. The problem with that is, when they leave to fish their prawns in the Irish Sea, <coughs> we don't have any legislation. It'll be a, a regional agreement. So if somebody breaches that, we can't use Irish law to enforce that control, and we'll have no European legislation. So how do we enforce control in that circumstance? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman here, yeah. Apart from <coughs> Lorcan O'Canada from the Irish Fish Producers Organization, Commissioner, you're very welcome. We'll be seeing you later on at a, at a, a more intimate meeting, I suppose. Um, in relation to your, your proposals on um, transferable concessions, you talk about essentially the maintenance of basically the limitation of this nationally. We, it's, it's not that we have an, ob, uh, an ob, uh, we would have an objection in principle, we have, but we have large practical uh, uh, issues with your proposal insofar as, insofar as of the analysis we have done of the treaties and the experience that we have seen the, from fa issues such as, for example, the Factor 10 case in the UK, which is very influential, that there is a, a, a very strong danger that countries which have maybe a, a shortage of quota and larger fleets than ours, which have greater access to capital, we, we simply can't see at present, but obviously uh, we would hope to see them developed in your proposal, uh, a system whereby that the, the transfers could be limited nationally, that any Spanish or French or UK or Danish citizen can come in here, establish themselves as a resident of here, and I see no mechanism. There may well be mechanisms, but I don't see them. The same applies to the establishment of of limited companies in this country. So that whereas you could have nominal national transfers under your system, but the, uh, the net effect of it would be international and that we would actually, we run the risk, especially as, as you mentioned with the pressures we're under, of being spectators of a fishing industry rather than participants in it. And that is, that's a genuine worry that we do have. No, no, sorry, let's ask Commissioner to answer those two, and then we come okay. back, is that all right? Okay. About the level playing field issue, this is very, very difficult. I have to admit it. I can understand the concerns. I'm trying. I cannot say that I have the best solutions for everybody, but I'm trying. And I'm here to hear from you if we have any proposals, because we really need a level playing field if we want to uh, go for uh, control and enforcement. I agree with you. So. Level playing field between uh, the vessels, European vessels and other countries' vessels. Other countries outside European Union. This is <coughs> the first uh, problem. Referring to this, I can say that the only way to control the situation here is to have a very good look at our imports. What we import. 
Is this fish sustainable? Is it fished with the rules we have agreed with third countries? Is it fished in a good way so we have common rules everywhere? If we do this, I don't want to go further in this issue because this is a sensitive issue. But we can understand perhaps that if we do this, we can really, really give advantage to our fishermen. I have this experience from the Mediterranean where, where a lot of other nations come and fish. So if we import only what is fished in a sustainable way, this will be the solution. About the level playing field between our member states, this is another issue. And I think that this is your main concern and also your concern. So what uh, can I do for this and uh, what guarantees can I give you that uh, it will be a level playing field between our uh, member states? I can say to you very openly that um, last year, we had uh, some very, very heavy sanctions against Spanish fleet. And they informed me that this is the first time we have gone, the commission has gone this way. And this will be the rule. Every member state is going to be treated in an equal and fair way. So they have come, they have overfished mackerel, they have overfished also what else? Heck there will be a great detection of their quotas. And it has been already, and they have implemented this. So I think that, of course, uh, um, implementation of the rules, control and enforcement is a technical issue, but also it's an issue of political willing. If they take the message that everybody here have to respect the rules, it will be the case. So they have to pay a lot, and I have, we have gone for strong deductions of their quotas. So I hope that this will be the case from now on. But So what we have to do is to have this regionalization procedure at a sea basin approach. This is the best way. In advisory councils, all of them are there. So we have to go there and try to find an agreement. So if at the regional level, at the sea basin level, there is an agreement, and I'm referring to your concerns about regionalization now, then we, the commission, we will be obliged to accept it. And this is something new. For example, Baltic Sea. We have the Baltic states all around with Russia and other guys. If they accept something, I will be obliged to go for it. So here I give them powers. But this is the only thing I can do to be compatible with the treaties, because the treaty says that I have to decide. So I'm transferring the power, but in a smart way. I'll keep the control afterwards to do something. And this is the best we could find. This is what we have done. So about the uh, concessions. Well, I can understand your concerns. We are here. My services are here. I would like to, to see if you have any legal uh, arguments about this case you have mentioned and all your experience. And we are trying to find the best way to go for safeguards. So what can I say? If there is no way to be sure about the safeguards, we are going to discuss it again. This is it. But I'm persuaded that we can have safeguards. But if you come to us with legal arguments and show in a very concrete way that there, uh, will, it will be a European uh, level uh, um, trade, then we can discuss it again. This is the only thing I need. But I, I'm, I'm willing to hear. But we don't go, want it to be at the European level. We really don't want it. We are not trying to fool you. We really don't want. Because we have to respect the relative stability. I have promised that I have to respect. It's, a, it's the rules. Uh, we're running out of time, and I have four hands up. So I'm afraid I'm going to close the door on the four. And I would it be all right if I took all four together? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, you were first uh, at the back, you and you. Yeah, I have a... So I'd ask uh, you to keep it quick too. Please. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, Dennis O'Flaherty from the Irish Fishermen's Organisation. Yeah, look, I have a very uh, simple question. And I look here to my left and I see this here. Reform of the common fishery policy, yeah. And uh, I've been in fishing for many years, but I've only got involved in the organisation in the last couple of years. And you said, Commissioner, you were shocked. But when I got involved, I'm absolutely shocked. I just, um, last night, I just went through a small few figures. So in just, Sorry, in can I a question, okay. please? Yeah. Okay. 
There was an injustice done in, in the 1970s regarding the share out, in particularly of the whitefish sector uh, for Ireland. And I read through it very simply. Uh, look, we've all these waters, waters, and we have this little bit of quota. You know, in particular, take some of our valuable stocks, like monkfish, 7% commissioner, 7% uh, uh, of the quota of the TAC. The TAC is approximately 32,000 tonnes in Area 7, which is primarily Irish waters, okay, England, and, and France also borders it, right? And we have, we have 2,000 tonnes, which equates to 8%. We take another fish like hake, the same, 7%. We take another fish, um, like I have four Sorry, species I here written down. I don't hear a question coming. Okay. Well, when is the real reform going to come? And when is that going to change? Because that is the fundamental problem of the Irish industry. We can think around little things regarding how, how stop discards, but we don't have the quota. We don't have the share out. And that must change. And that's what Irish fishermen want to see. Of course we want sustainability. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Dan, at the back, no, the, the second gentleman in, yeah. I'm taking you in order of, pre of pre presentation, please. Thanks very much. Uh, Thomas Pringle, I'm a member of the Parliament, uh, representing Donegal South West. <coughs> um, just, in, and just two quick points or questions. First one is that, um, that I welcome the fact that the Commissioner said that uh, Irish fish stocks will be are an Irish resource from now. That's, that's certainly a change within the European Union. But given that we only, uh, that other countries control 83% of our stocks, how is that going to be reversed if the, if the Union now recognises that their stocks are a national resource for us? Um, and, the, and the other question is on the international tradable quotas. Um, obviously, the EU looks on a very long time scale, and the introduction of transferable quotas now is the thin end of the wedge. And in 10 years' time, after, the first, after we get to the, through the first or second review of this new policy, we will see the complete liberalisation of the, the fish uh, quota system and the decimation and wipeout of the Irish fishing industry. And I think those are the failures of the common fishes policy. And I think. The, the Commissioner has outlined her proposals to the Commission, and that's the basis for the final agreement. So all we're left with now is to tinker around at the edges, and I think that that's going to be for the detriment of, of Ireland. Uh, this lady here, and then I'll write. Thank you. Uh, Siobhan Egan from Birdwatch Ireland. We're also a member of the Ocean 2012 Coalition, I believe you know. Um, I have two specific questions, if I may. Um, firstly, to do with um, transferable concessions, um, this appears to be the, the silver bullet. Um, and uh, what I wanted to ask was what your feeling was on having a more um, a, a principle um, incorporated in your proposal about um, socially and environmentally acceptable fishing um, and access to resources on that basis. Um, that would maybe apply to a small, uh, small boat sizes as well as large or be across the board type of criteria as opposed to depending on a, a silver bullet type approach, which seems to be quite a specific measure and would be mandatory. Uh, secondly then, I was wondering what your, um, what your message to the minister was. Um, certainly at council, he agrees with the broad objectives and, and many of the principles in the proposal, but when it comes to specifics and timescales and when things might happen, um, he's kind of saying, well, maybe, maybe not now, maybe we're not ready yet. Um, what's your message, given the urgency that you've already presented to us? Uh, what's your message to him? And finally, if I may. <laughs> Very quickly. Thank you. Um, uh, we welcome the fact that there's more specific wording about paying heed to scientific advice. Um, this is the crux of the issue, of course, because when it comes to December Council meetings, what ministers decide to do by way of quota um, is very important. But also scientific advice when it comes to reaching sustainability type targets. The wording is there, but what specific measures do you see going into place to make sure that scientific advice is actually listened to in these two important components? Thank you. Thank you very much. And just the, the last question, just the gentleman at the corner in the glasses. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <coughs> Pat Kyo, a member of the Institute. Um, my question really follows on on what Peter Whelan's question over here and the gentleman here beside me. The facts are that 80% of the fish uh, around Ireland is caught, are, is caught by other member states and there's probably at any one time six member states catching those fish. And uh, apart from the technical measures, um, the reality is the quotas of those member states are managed, are managed separately by the individual member states. 
in France and the UK and elsewhere. So I'm not, I, I haven't heard from the Commissioner yet what proposals she's going to bring forward to ensure uniformity in the enforcement of rules and regulations. Are you going to transfer powers to the regional advisory councils or otherwise? Uh, I haven't heard how you're going to do it. And I have to say that the slowness on the part of the Commission in responding to the problem on the macro stock vis-a-vis -vis where Iceland and Faroes have, have allocated themselves autonomously huge quotas um, uh, over the past two years, um, you know, it does not give me great, great heart because I see yet that there has been no effective action taken by the Commission against Faroes in Iceland to ensure that they cannot, that they will not continue to go on allocating themselves <coughs> and fishing hundreds of thousands of tons of a stock that will very soon be endangered. Thank you. Very much. Okay, let's try to. Uh, I can understand a lot of arguments because it's not some uh, were real arguments, very very serious political arguments. But I would like to be very honest and say to you that uh, these arguments are coming to an issue which is beyond my competences. Let me put it very openly. I have to implement the treaties. I'm here, I'm a commissioner for fisheries, I have to implement the treaties. The treaties say in a very clear way that the fish stocks are EU stocks. We don't have Irish stocks, we don't have Spanish stocks, we don't have whatever stocks. So I, I cannot accept this logical because I cannot work with it. I can understand what you are saying. I have to be clear, but being in the European Union means that we have accepted that there are no Irish stocks. This is a problem I cannot solve. It's beyond me. It's a political problem, high-level political problem. You have to manage it. But being in the European Union, it means that we have signed the treaties. And we have accepted that there is no Irish stocks. Please understand it. I can understand what you are saying about Irish seas. I can, and also, I, I, I can be Greek and say the same for my country. But here, as a commissioner, I cannot can answer to these questions. Really, I cannot. I have EU stocks. I would like, for me, a Spanish vessel, an Irish vessel, a French vessel is the same. I have to do so. I have to be, to accept everything. So what I really am here to do is to see if we have any, um, if the rules are implemented in a good way and fair way between the member states. And that's why I was referring to what we have done, referring to overfishing of Spanish vessel, referring to mackerel, and, and it was the first time. I have to apologize because this didn't happen before. I have to apologize, but I really mean that for, from now on, it will be an equal treatment of everybody. But the other issue I cannot solve. So I cannot um, understand your arguments about 80% of Irish stocks fished by others. There is no such a case for me. I have EU stocks, and I would like to be fished, them to be fished by EU fishermen, or all the same. So this is um, something, we, a concession you have to accept. Otherwise, there is no European Union. Being in European Union give you, gives you other possibilities. You can export in another way. But this is something you have to decide. I cannot solve this problem. Let me be honest. I don't want to fool you. OK? So um, about uh, what is done here, what uh, we have to work together to find a way out is to work at a regional basis. So this is something I can accept. We have to work more in order to find out solutions and try to be sure that the control and implementation and enforcement issues are solved. Let's try to work together and find ways to go for it and have a level playing field between all European fishermen. About uh, the concessions, I can um, attend the discussion. Small-scale fisheries can be accepted. This is absolutely clear. But if you have any other suggestions about it and try to find more safeguards, more uh, strong, uh, we, can, we are going to, to ask. We are going to ask you and we are going to decide. So about uh, the ministers and if they say we are not ready to go for sustainability or whatever, I have to cooperate with ministers. Um, I, I, the council has to decide. I have to be there. I have to give explanations. I have to give good proposals, but they are going to decide at the end. 
So I am at their disposal to do my best in order to persuade them that we really need, respons uh, need sustainability. But it's also their responsibility. Okay? So they are going to take the decisions. And so some people have to persuade them. If you, uh, you really believe that we have to go for avoiding discards, or you have also to persuade them. About uh, what is going to be uh, in the future, referring to the last experience um, about this uh, issue and the war with Icelanders and Faroese referring to the mackerel uh, stock. Let me be clear about it. I cannot accept that uh, the Commission was slow or the Commission does not react. This is absolutely, this is not true. We have done our best. Let me explain. As since as this problem came out, we came with very strict proposals to the Council. I have discussed this in the Council, every Council, three or four discussions. I have tried to do our best, and now I have some good news, really good news. I'm preparing a new instrument to block all the imports from Iceland and Far East if they are not going to fish sustainably. We didn't have such an instrument. And I have worked in the Commission, and we have gone up, and we are, we are ready now. It, it, it was a miracle eh, to have a new legal instrument just in some months. So the instrument is ready now. It's inter-service consultation. I hope that until the end of the year, we will be at a very good position to block the imports of Faroese and Icelanders. We didn't have the instrument to do so till now. What we could do is to block only the import of fresh fish. But they don't care about fresh fish because they export to us fish meal, fish oil, and all the other products. So now we have worked, and in two months, we have prepared this instrument. So I cannot accept this. The others, I can accept the arguments against the commission. But on this issue, I think that we have done our best, really. Our best, the Commission, we have done our best, of course. The ministers, they have to decide if they are going for it. This is it. So, uh, can I have a last word? Of course. Okay, I would like to say to you that uh, my team is here. Maya Kishner is here, the deputy head of my cabinet, and Ernesto Peñas, who is the general director and uh, the director, yes, uh, of this uh, exercise and responsible for our reform. So, the... Uh, these people are at your disposal. And please don't hesitate to come. But uh, I, I, what I would like to make, to clarify, is what we can discuss to be productive. I can understand your concerns. There are issues on which I cannot move. But if you can give me more proposals about decentralization, I'm going to accept. If you give me more proposals about safeguards, referring to uh, concessions. I'm going to accept. So please don't hesitate to come forward. And of course, the ministers and the council uh, and the parliament, they are going to decide. Thank you. No. No, I'm sorry. The commissioner has to go. And I understand this is going to be a long process. I don't follow. Is the share in the reform or not in the reform? Is the share of change? No, sorry. No, no, okay. No, no, there is no change referring to your share. No, sorry, I'm sorry. This is a, no, this is, this is, I think this is a bit of an abused I, position. Uh, wait a minute. I have, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes. I can understand, but please, 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 please try to understand me. I have given you very, very clear views on this. The relative stability has to be respected, absolutely. So we are not going to change this. Please, what else can I say? 